So, you're playing the new update to Fallout 76, Steel Rain. And you know you've heard about the legendary crafting system, but where do you get legendary cores? And where do I get legendary modules? Well, you're in luck. I'm going to show you exactly the way I have collected cores and modules. But first, there's one thing I know you're willing to help me out with. That's right, you can do it. Thank you so much. I knew you'd help me out. First off, legendary cores and modules, when collected, will be inside your miscellaneous tab in your Pip-Boy. The legendary core looks like a grayed out fusion core, and the legendary module will look like a regular weapon mod. Legendary modules have been in the game for some time, but just in case you're not sure how to get them, all you need to do is visit our favorite lottery representative, the Purveyor. If you're not familiar with the Purveyor, She's the Wasteland's local RNG god representative. I have a few videos of her uh, past treachery linked in the description down below. Check them out. So yes, this does mean you'll need scrip to collect modules. Each module will cost you around 50 scrip. Not too bad, but she is still robbing us blind. Furthermore, the purveyor has added a few new items to her shop's collection. Before the update, she offered random rolls on armor, melee and ranged weapons, and varieties of 1-star, 2-star, and 3-star legendaries. Now she offers legendary power armor in the same varieties, 1, 2, and 3-star rolls. Just keep in mind there is no way to control what legendary effects she gives you, and it's all rolled onto random equipment. Currently she has her mystery pick as well. This costs 60 script, but is completely random. It could be a 1-3-star to three star legendary, placed on any random piece of equipment, armor, weapon, whatever it is. In my opinion, it's not worth it. During this visit, I purchased seven modules. That's all I could buy with the script I had. So that's how you get modules. It's pretty much the only way to get them. The Purveyor. Now, there are a few ways to get legendary cores. The first way to do this is to run one of the public events. Go to your map and hit up on the D-pad if you're on console, and scroll down to public event. In this case, we got Swarm of Suitors. This event is at the Possum Campground. It's a pretty common place and most people have been there. When you arrive, you go to the island in the water and kill off Mirelurks until the Mirelurk Queen spawns. Upon killing the Queen, you will receive your rewards. This should include a core. If this is your first legendary core, you will get a pop-up and it will display some info on how to craft legendary items. From left to right it goes, get legendary cores from completing events and daily ops. Use legendary cores to modify your weapons, armor, and power armor at workbenches. Mods can be re-rolled any number of times at any crafting station. In my experience so far, Swarm of Suitors has been the most consistent event giving cores. I tried multiple events at multiple locations across the map. And every time I completed Swarm of Suitors, I received one to two cores. The other events did pay out occasionally, but not like this event. So make sure you do this event if it pops up in the server you're playing. The second way to collect cores is to run the daily op. Similar to the last way, go to your map, press up on the d-pad, and select daily ops. This can be challenging depending on what enemies are in the event for the day, especially if you are a lower level. If you're concerned about running this solo, try to put together a team. It'll help you complete this event more effectively. Once you complete the event, you will check your rewards and see you received a legendary core. If you enjoy daily ops, this is a good way to collect cores and legendaries to break down for script. The last way to collect cores is to run the nuke events and the other two world events. If you're not sure how to launch a nuke, or you're struggling to launch a nuke, I have a video in the description below that should help you complete the silo fairly easily. The first event is a colossal problem. You'll drop the nuke on this location on the map. This event is very challenging and you will most likely need a team to complete it, but at the end of the event you should receive a legendary core. The second event, and probably the most common, is Scorched Earth. You drop a nuke in the bottom right of the map at this location here. Then the Scorched Beast Queen will spawn and you'll have to kill her off. She has legendary so she'll mutate, get her health back, and then you'll take her down. Generally the server shows up for this event so it's not ever going to be you fighting solo. More than likely you won't be fighting it solo. The third event is at a location called Arctos Pharma. The event is called Project Paradise. This event is impossible to complete solo and barely possible if you have a team of four. But if you complete this event you will get a core. Problem with this event is most people don't know how to beat it and don't care because it's super hard and a lot of people have given up. So this would be my least likely choice if you're trying to farm cores. Lastly, we have the event Encrypted. 
in the ash heap. This event you probably need a team for. You fight an imposter sheep squatch who cloaks frequently with hordes of robots protecting her. But it's not too hard to run once you've figured out how to beat it. The downside to this event is that it is expensive to buy the Assaultron Recall keycard, and you do need a new one every time you wish to run the event. But if you have a surplus of cash, this event may be the route to take. Okay, now that you've collected your cores and your modules, take a trip back to your camp or to White Springs to use the available crafting stations. First off, we can now add legendary effects to power armor. Awesome. As you can see, we can look at an existing piece of legendary armor, and we have an option to re-roll the legendary effects as a one, two, or three star. One star takes one core and two modules, two star takes three cores and three modules, and a three star takes five cores and four modules. These same rules apply to power armor that is not legendary yet. You can roll one, two, or three star legendary for the same core and module costs. If we head to the weapons workbench, we will see a similar system. Here we have an existing legendary we can choose to reroll if we want. The core and the module costs per star level are the same. One star takes one core and two modules. Two star takes three cores and three modules. And a three star takes five cores and four modules. This trends the same way with weapons that are non-legendary. Here we have a 50 cal that has no legendary effects. You can see the costs remain the same. Lastly, we head to the armor workbench, and I bet you guessed it, all the legendary rolls cost the same as we said before. So for a recap, a 1 star takes 1 core and 2 modules across all methods, power armor, weapons, or armor. A 2 star takes 3 cores and 3 modules across all the crafting stations, and a 3 star takes 5 cores and 4 modules across all crafting stations. Here I show you what crafting looks like. I choose to apply a legendary effect to my power armor torso. I click accept and I get the mutants effect along with a plus one endurance and ammo weight reduced by 20%. If I don't like this effect, I can re-roll the legendary and it will be assigned another random loadout. All right, so that's how it's done. If you guys think I missed anything or know another method to collecting cores, please let me know down in the comment section below. I'd be happy to hear about it. And if the video helped you out in any way, please let me know by hitting that like button. It really does help me out. And if I've truly won you over and you want to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button and check out my Fallout 76 playlist on my channel. Anyway, that's it for this one. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one. Later.